Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, uh, last episode we had, we were working on getting a chuck mounted over here on my Revet lathe. Uh, we had to make a new back plate for this, from Machina back plate to mount it on. I got the chuck mounted up, and uh, when we checked it uh, for run out after it was on there, it's got a little bit of run out in it. It's not terrible, it's about four thousandths, I think is what I measured. It varies a little bit depending on where you're at on there. But it, I, I think we got room for improvement. You know, with a three jaw chuck, you're very seldom gonna ever get one running perfectly true. If you need to get something running perfectly true, typically you're gonna have to dial it in by hand with a four jaw chuck. But uh, I think what we're seeing on here is a little bit excessive and it's probably just got to do with the mounting that we did uh, and just not being absolutely perfect. But this chuck is permanently mounted now to this back plate or at least until I take it off for some reason, which I do not plan to do. So for, for an all pit intent purposes, it is permanently mounted. So uh, what I'm gonna do is we're actually going to come in here and resurface the faces on the jaws. We're gonna actually grind them with a uh, internal grinder here to set up on my lathe so that we get it ground perfectly true to the machine so that it will run true from now on. That's the game plan. Let's get in here, take a look at where we're starting with, show you the setup, get the job done, and hopefully see an improvement in the end. All right, let's start out by just showing where we're at. So the, I've got a piece of ground rod in here. This is a, should be very concentric, so it should be pretty much the exact same diameter anywhere on there. Uh, any variation there is gonna be slight. So um, I've got it zeroed out right here, and when I spin it out, this far out on the end, uh, well, I'm gonna re-zero that just a little bit. It's about five thou out, out on that end. So um, we're gonna move in, come a little bit closer to the chuck. Let's, uh, let's re-zero it there. And it's very similar, maybe not quite, but it looks like it's about four and a half thou there. So. What that's telling me is, is that for the most part, our run out in here has just got to do with this thing not seating down perfectly uh, onto the back plate uh, in relationship to the center of where this was ground before. And quite honestly, when the back plate was put on this chuck at the factory, they probably ground these jaws in. And whenever I put the new back plate on here, uh, it's probably moved around a little bit from uh, what was at the factory. So I don't think there's anything necessarily wrong with my setup. I think it's just got to do with this particular, you know, chuck and changing back plates. No big deal. We're going to fix it. So uh, let's show you the process here. So to do this grinding job, we're going to be using a tool post grinder. Uh, and I have a tool post grinder here mounted to the lathe. This is actually a one that's uh, it's actually badged south bend. It's made to go on a south bend lathe. Uh, but it works fine on this machine. Uh, it was about a half inch low off the center, but I was able to shim it up and basically get this thing to work fine over here on this machine. Now, I've got an arbor on here that has a little grinding wheel. This, this little extension arbor, normally it just has a grinding wheel that goes on here. This is something that I actually just uh, made up, and I actually made this a long time ago to do the exact same job on a chuck out of the museum. Uh, so I basically just made a little extension arbor here. We got a little grinding wheel on the end, and uh, this is gonna spin up. Uh, when you turn it on, you can see that grinding wheel is uh, grinding. So I put a new stone in here. The stone that was in here was uh, messed up, so I've just got another stone in here. But I, what I need to do before I do anything else is true this stone up. So what I've got back here is just a, a little uh, diamond. This is for truing up a, a, a grinding wheel. And I made a little piece here that just fits up in the lathe that holds it in place. So um, we'll fire up our, fire up our um, tool post grinder. I'm just gonna come in and we'll just feed in until we're just touching on that diamond like such. And we'll go back and forth on that. And I need to go in a little bit deeper, it looks like. And we're just making that wheel run true with the arbor that we got there. And that looks to be pretty well dressed. I'm happy with that. So we can now 
take our diamond out of the chuck. So the next step we want to do is put some tension on these jaws and uh, you know if you feel in here I don't know if you can see that but there's a little bit of play in there and that's just got to do with the way these scrolls match up to the back plate that's turning it around. So ideally you want this to be under pressure to kind of uh, duplicate how it's going to work, how it's going to be on those, those, uh, those, the scroll in the back. Uh, unfortunately, there's really not a way to tighten it down in the direction that you would normally run. But with this being a pr very new chuck and it shouldn't have a lot of wear, I'm going to kind of cheat a little bit. We're going to put a, a metal ring. And again, this ring I actually made uh, when I did my last chuck, but it's just a uh, I just took it on the lathe and bored it out so they've got a nice uh, true in, inside circle. But I'm just going to put some pressure on the back of that. Now my jaws are tight. They're not going to move around. And uh, it may not be exactly 100% perfect uh, because I'm actually hitting the, the, the teeth on the back side of the scroll instead of the front side of the scroll. But in the grand scheme of things, it's going to be close enough that it's really just it's probably not going to matter for much of anything. So now what we'll do is we'll come in here and kind of get the, the grindstone in the middle. I've got enough depth to go all the way to the very back back there. I will mention that some people, uh, particularly if you got a, a, a chuck with removable jaws like this, if the back part back here uh, is a larger diameter than the front part. Sometimes you can put a little piece in there in the back of that, tighten it down and just touch off on these front jaws. But in this particular case, they're ground all the way to the back. So that's really not going to be an option. So uh, let's go ahead and get the lathe fired up. For this job, I want to run my chuck at a fairly low speed. I'm going to turn my grinder on. I'm going to come in here and we're just going to, I'm going to pull the tool post grinder toward me until I just start touching. So we'll uh, wait until we start seeing some sparks here. You can hear it's, it's touching on two of the two of the jaws. It's not hitting on one right there. I'm going to turn my feed on, and we're just going to let it feed in very slow. And basically, the game plan here is is we're going to feed this in until we get all three teeth touching all the way to the back or all three jaws touching all the way to the back. Uh, we should have everything cleaned up nice and true. So uh, I'm just going to let this go nice and slow. We're not in a hurry and uh, get these things touched up. Those teeth are kind of serrated. So uh, right now it's actually an area where it's not touching any, but as it feeds in, It'll come back in contact, and now it's coming back in on those two uh, pads again. So, uh, all right, so I have fed out about three, th this is a third pass, and it's about three thousandths total. And I'm actually, I can hear it hitting on all three teeth now, or all three jaws. So, uh, that's real good. I think that uh, this is good. And, and according to the math, that's about where I would expect to have seen, uh, seen it do it. One arm's just barely touching right now. I may take another thou just to clean them all up real good, but I can hear that even click, click, click. So uh, it's, it's touching on all three. So we're getting real close to having these done. So after doing some grinding, I've got my indicator back out and we're going to check this again. We started out, I think it was between four and five thou. And now we're down to, that's about two and a half thou. 
it's a little over two thou. I don't know what the angle looks like. I'm looking at it straight down here, but probably it's just shy of two and a half thou out. I could get a tense indicator out if I wanted to, but um, it's not really necessary. So basically I've taken the run out on this, cut it in half, and we've got it down to two and a half thou. Again, this is a three jaw chuck. A three jaw chuck is never going to run absolutely perfect. Um, they do make some three jaw chucks that have four jaw four, or four adjustments on there where you can fine tune one like a four jaw chuck. But if you ever need to get something running perfect, you need to reach for your four jaw. But this right here is now in my book what I consider acceptable for a three jaw chuck. Uh, this is going to be come over here, put something in here and get it going. Uh, and you know, if you're making the whole part in one operation, and everything's getting turned, it's going to be perfectly round. It's just that when you have a, uh, a surface that's already finished and you want to match something to that, that's when you go get your four jaw and dial it in just right. But we've improved the situation here considerably. I'm much happier with how we are now, and uh, we're going to call this job a success. Well, there you go. That's how you can use your tool post grinder to actually improve the accuracy of a three jaw chuck. Again, it's never gonna be perfect, but we can make it better uh, when you got something that's not right. And this is now gonna be good for me to use for a long time to go over on my new to me Revet lathe. So one little thing I am gonna comment on because I know I'm gonna get some comments on this. If you notice my speedometer or my uh, tachometer rather is out of the, the lathe right now. Uh, I found a speedometer shop that specializes in restoring those things, and I just decided, you know what, uh, I'm going to send it off those guys, let them take it apart, properly clean it. Uh, they were going to do some other things to it. Actually, they were going to make a new face for it because my face had some issues in it, and uh, they're going to do a full-blown uh, cleaning, restoration, check that thing out from top to bottom, send it back, and we're going to put it in and see if if by chance that doesn't solve the problem uh, with the tachometer that we were seeing over here on the lathe, uh, and if nothing less, nothing, nothing less, we'll have a very nice restored tachometer that we know is not the problem uh, later on down the road. So anyway, I know somebody's going to comment on that. That's going to be a wrap, guys. Uh, thanks for watching. As always, please leave comments if you like. Uh, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. We'll catch you on the next video. Thanks for watching.